Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, April the 8th, 2019, and what a pretty decent day today. We did get a lot of good breakouts, and I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a good Monday. You know, the markets sometimes are a little bit hectic in the morning, uh, not really moving in the right direction with the SPY the way we wanted, but it did have a nice close However, you know, we still managed to find some really good trading ideas today. So if you did listen to yesterday's video, you would have been in LEDs today. We'll talk about LEDs. We're going to talk about DCAR, PHAS, NBEV, and CJJD. So let's get started. So we did talk about LEDs yesterday, the semi-LEDs group. And we did see that uh, it had a beautiful move today. I mean, there's obviously uh, no real news in LEDs. But we're just talking about the chart and the fundamentals and how we're looking for this to make a move today. And you know what? LEDs is looking really nice. I mean, the stock today uh, opened up at, um, let's see here. Sorry about that. Uh, opened up at 451. Previously closed on Friday, you know, at 450. It is kind of a bit of a slow start off to the morning. But let me tell you, that stock was picking up. I mean, it also alerted this on Friday for a swing trade. And I alerted again today at $4.83 to the room to consider this for a swing trade. And my target on this one's about 7 for now. Probably can go higher, but looking for some, um, definitely some continuation to happen on the stock. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim because this one is high as 5.32 today. And the low of the day was 4.39. So, I mean, if you listened to the video yesterday, you would have made almost a dollar a share. And you know what? It's still holding up here around 5.30 after hours. So, Jim, let's hear about the LEDs chart again because I know you talked to us already yesterday, but seeing that it has made some movements today, I really want to hear your um, feedback on the chart's direction going forward. Oh, yeah. Well, this year i got three different years of trend lines on this, all the way from 217, 218, and 219 in the blue. Um, we're up in 217 records, so we're going back to that three-year level. And I'm going to pull up the three-year chart right now and see what it looks like. It looks like we had a yearly high of about 1135, and we had a good resistance level right here at 721, with maybe a little one right here. So I'm kind of just focusing on that right now. I'm going to pull up the 20-day. We have had a good five-day run. We broke out of the channel that we had of 360 to 393 to around 399 area and I see that right there but then I targeted this five day channel that we broke out of today it was the top of it was right around here around 480 and once we hit that top of that channel she went ahead and broke on out and created a pretty good resistance high up here at 530 after hours so let me pull up the daily one minute you see what I mean by that channel right there pull up the daily three minute and I'm going to see a little support system right down here, right around the $5 area to maybe the $4.95, which will be right up into that 100 SMA on a daily three minute. Well, I use the daily one minute, so we're going to look at it next. And that's where I judge my moving averages. We did have it respecting the 20 day most of the day today, and she did kind of touch back to that 50 day and then bounced right up to double top resistance at 5.30. And then here she pulled back the 20 SMA, undercovered the, the 100 and the 50, and then we broke up with a triple top here at 5.30 after hours. So I think this is a continuation to go on and move up a little bit higher. That next resistance is going to be this red line right here at 5.43. I'm going to pull up this 20-day one more time, magnify it up a little bit. Well, I don't know if I need to magnify it or not. Yeah, 543 is next, but that has been a beautiful chart today. On the hour, on the daily hour, each candlestick was kind of, the base was kind of above the other one, which showed a very bullish present. We're going to have a pullback support right here around 495 if it decides to pull back. That's going to be your low support. Second one's going to be here at 5, and then 507. And I see another one right here at 512. So I'm going to draw that little trend line in there for support level at 512. I think she'll continue on up to that 543. And that's going to be our next resistance. And remember, I always use the four moving averages on my daily. 
that's the 200 the 20 and I've got the 100 right here and the 50 so I use them as supports and resistances but right now after hours we're at 530 and the next one we're going to talk about is Decar. Okay, so you know what, Decar, you guys know this company. Um, they're into the next generation of mobility by having the automotive industry products and services to everyone's front door. And you know, um, Dropcar had their earnings uh, last week, and uh, the revenue did pass six million dollars. The cash position has been strengthened. The operating results have improved because they've reduced expenses. And they have some new deals and an increase in their B2B sales of 132%. But you know what? They have a lot of work to do. Um, they, you know, they have transformed the business a little bit. Um, in the first quarter, they did a B2C in August 2018 from a valet parking focused subscription offering to the less labor intensive self park model, uh, which was a major generator of losses into a gross margin business within the fourth quarter. Um, they also did expand into Washington, D.C., San Francisco, L.A., New Jersey, and Baltimore. And really, it was due to the company's partnership with General Motors' Maven brand car sharing program. And uh, they also excluded their footprint in the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing space by adding Turo, which is one of the largest peer-to-peer -peer car sharing networks to the drop car mobility cloud logistics platform. So they, you know, they have, let's say new clients already. They're in advanced discussions with some other apparently brand name automotive partners that are in the vehicle subscription peer to peer car sharing space to provide sales as a service technology or drop car managed services. Um, and they did mention that they have apparently some discussions with some major fleet organizations. So that's all good. Uh, they still have to, um, you know, get the company in, in good shape. And, uh, you know, remember they had an offering at one time as well, not too long ago. And um, so, you know, they're looking to shape the company up. So uh, if you can look at the uh, stock today, um, I see that there, you know, I did spot there looked like to have a lot of shorts. We actually talked about this stock on Friday. And I did mention that this was a, a good potential trade for the day or even a potential swing trade. And that was because I saw the unusual kind of volume, but I kind of like the pattern of the chart. And you know what? Uh, drop cars had some good action today. And I anticipate this to still have some continuation. Um, the stock did go as high as 297 and still holding up here around 283 after hours. So I'm going to say that I'm looking for around 340-ish on the stock, but I'd like to hear what Jim's going to say because, you know what, he's the chart guy. So, Jim, what are you going to tell us about Drop Car? Well, Drop Car a couple weeks ago had a real nice run, had a real nice breakout from, I'd say, probably the support level right around 402 all the way up to 647. And I'll show that here on the 20-day chart. And we played it in this channel back here at 366 to 364. So we're way oversold right now. We're getting ready to have a breakout here of about 296 to 3 bucks. It'll run up to this 100 SMA. And I'm going to put that right around the $3 level for the breakout to go up to the next level of resistance. And then we have a huge gap to fill from this sell-off we had back here on, uh, oh, it was back on 329, 2019. And you did see the breakout that we had all the way up here to 684, and she did run to about 660. I kind of surprised me, this, this run here, this breakout, but it did happen, and it pulled right back that pre-market that next morning. Kind of stuttered around for a dead cat bounce, and then she went ahead and pulled back to, to a day low, to a 20-day low about three days ago. And that was back here right around the 230 area. So yeah, I think this is kind of bullish. I think it can bounce on up. We do have a little spread we got to make up here, a little, little loss of territory from 3 to 366. And I'm going to put a little resistance level that we got to break, so it's going to be that 334. So if we can bust out of this 296 area, pass that 100 SMA, I think we can run her on up. And if not, she'll pull back to support level right here, right around 270 to maybe right around the 245 area. And that's going to be Dakar. And the next one we're going to talk about is... P-H-A-S. That's right. 
Okay, so PHAS, you know what? This one had news after hours, but I got to tell you, I mean, this is one of the stocks. We've talked about this one before. Um, and I believe we talk about the stock, Jim, when it was around $8. And, um, you know, it opened up today at 1076, went as high as 1275. And then, you know what? After hours, this company had news. And the news on Phase Bio, uh, they did nab accelerated review status in the U.S. for a drug called PB2452. And the FDA designates Phase Bio uh, Pharmaceuticals a breakthrough therapy for use as a reversal agent for AstraZeneca's anti-clotting med brilinta. And this therapy will provide more intensive guidance from the FDA on development. There'll be the involvement of more senior agency personnel and a rolling review of the marketing application. So as a result, the shares are up 17% after hours. And you know what? I think there'll be some more movement on the stock. So, Jim, let's hear about that chart. It's a beautiful chart, and we did call this at a very low a couple weeks ago. And I keep thinking it was right around the $7 on a breakout. And it might have been this breakout that we had right here, because it was down here, down here around 350 something And I do remember us calling it that day, and it did pull on back pretty hard and found a little support area of a double bottom right here, right around the 548 so she has broke out she's been running she had a high here of 1283 and that's the resistance we had to break today she pulled back to support level which is right around 923 this is on a 20-day chart and we do have a double top resistance right here at 717 and i'm going to pull up the daily one minute draw some new trend lines on here i see a support level pretty much right in I'm going to put it right here, right here around 414. I do think it might pull back, but we are seeing a pennant pattern, pennant ascending flag, where it could go ahead and break out up higher. But I think she's right. I think this is a stock we need to be watching. I know she's right. And 1675, and we got a 1618, and I got a support level right down here, right around the 1521. So if this stock does pull back to any of my four moving averages, especially the 1648, at least the 100 SMA, that's the one I think it's going to bounce up off of. And we are did have a new high after, not a new high, but it is at 1734 after hours. And we've got to break the resistance here at 1755. And I'm going to go on ahead and drill it in there, 1756, 1755. So we've got... Two or three different support levels, a low support at 1521. Look at the breakout on this, though. This can went all the way from 1252 all the way up to 15, 1760. That's a $5 bounce just pre market. And then she created an ascending triangle pattern right here off that pennant flag and didn't dip down. So there's a lot of people interested in this play. Support levels right at 1618, 1521. Or 1410 for a low low support I don't think it's going to go down that far but it can and we got to break the resistance of 1761 1760 and I'm gonna pull up a three-year chart yep that's a three-year high that's a one-year high and look at that channel ain't that pretty and we did break out of that resistance level of 1235 so Keep a good watch on this. We're going to look at this one more time. But after hours, she did have a beautiful breakout. And I think it can pull back, like I said, to that 1521 area, 1618 or 1675, or maybe hit run off the 100 SMA. And the next one we're going to talk about is one of our favorites that we've been watching for over almost a year now, and that's InBev. It did have news today, too. Absolutely. And Bev, you know, the drink that no, nobody wants. Um, you know what? This was good. I mean, this stock was being shorted like no tomorrow. And the news on the stock was that it expanded its Marley brand distribution deal with Walmart. And the national agreement is the first for the company. So there's three flavors of organic uh, beverage. There's uh, Jamon Berry, there's Yaman Mint, there's Jamaican Me Mango, and all of these will be available in Walmart stores this month. So that is a really interesting deal. It's a distribution deal. And you know what? The stock went up. 
And um, it is the first national account penetration for new age beverage because consumers are increasingly shifting towards healthy food and beverage. And um, I think this is excellent news for Enbev. And you know what? People gave up on the stock at one time. And, uh, you know, maybe they, you know, they just don't want to, you know, deal with it anymore. And that's fine. But, you know, you have to remember, I was talking about new beverage. Okay. And I remember I, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember I talked to you about the Noni juice. Remember? Yep. Oh yeah. It's like a grape, it's like a grape juice. And Enbev owns these companies. They own Tahitian Noni. They own Zing Tea. They own Marley. They own over a trillion dollars of non-alcoholic beverages. Okay. They operate websites called Mirinda.com, NewAgeBev.com. They own ZingTea.com, they own DrinkMarley.com, and they own CocoLibre.com. So this is big. And they also have a water charity called WaterIsLife.com. And this is to help the world in the water crisis. So I think they're, you know, good company. So you know what? When I remember I was talking to you guys about how they're connected with the Noni juice, I thought, oh, my God, I remember that from 20 years ago. Like that is an amazing grape juice. It has so many good benefits uh, for people with arthritis and skin conditions. Anyways, going back to Enbev, uh, we were on this uh, from the morning, but what we really got interesting here is around five dollars and uh, ninety cents. I was looking for the high of day break of five ninety five, and you know what? I spotted that because I could see the shorts were holding this down, and I alerted that in the room and said. If this can break 595, I said we're gonna roast some shorts, and you know what? That's exactly what we did. We took this all the way up to 669, and we had a, also a big float rotation. So the floats rotated once, and this actually tells me that we could probably see a continuation in Enbev. I mean, look at it after hours; it's at 645. So not bad for the performance of the stock today. The volume was incredible: 66.05 million stocks traded shares traded so that's amazing day for nbev and you know what sorry shorts i mean you were warned so uh jim over to you on this chart because i think nbev is not done yeah i do too i don't think it's done either and it also has this kombucha drink and that that's what really entered that's going to be bringing in a lot of revenue for this company too and this news was back on january the 29th so that's what really got me really excited i mean besides the other drinks that it has so let's look at the chart. This is a yearly chart. We did have some real nice highs up here, right around the nine dollar area resistance level, with a with just a penny under ten bucks. So it, it went right down here to about eight ninety five for resistance. We got a couple more in here. I'm going to draw on in real fast. That I think this stock has a lot more room to run and a little bit to pull back. So let's look at the twenty day. Just look at that all the way from, and this, I think it even had a shelf offering today. It went from 470, but with that Walmart news, it just kind of gave it a catalyst, a catalyst to just keep running on up. So we had a low of 470. I mentioned this last week in the room. I kind of wish I would because that, that triangle didn't look too good going down. But once it got that news this morning, it just broke all the way up, ran from that 470 all the way to 699. And then I caught Total, I mean, we were hitting these resistances one right after another, and then when it hit that 668, I said we're going to pull bound back a little bit, and that's what we did exactly. So let's pull it up to the daily one minute. You can see the pattern that it played. It did respect the 20 SMA most of the day. Kind of pulled back a little bit, got under it right in here, but I did call a little trend on, a little triangle breakout, and that's what happened. It broke out, and then it pulled on back. Then we created a double top here at 6.68, right here after hours, and now it's pulled back to 6.45. So I'm looking at this trade and I'm going, okay, where is it going to pull back to maybe for a support level? I got a low support here at 6.22. I got a 6.31, and then I've got this red trend line here at 6.43, which is going to be a solid support. And that's about where we broke out at with this triangle that I had right here. This little triangle called I called this little breakout. It just didn't want to break it for for about six seven minutes, and then finally it bounced on up and hit that resistance level at six 
think that's right around 643. So let's go ahead and pull this on up, magnify it to where we can see what's going on after hours here. I'm gonna... So yeah, we pulled right back to that 643 again, and that's part of that trend line where that flag was running, and she held pretty good right there. So if it does pull back, probably 622, 631, maybe 614, but that's going to be a solid support, solid entry. I mean, real solid. I don't see it going that low, not off this Walmart news. But the news did create a double top, one right after hours. So tomorrow, let's see if we can break it, turn it into a triple top, and then continue on up to about, let me pull this 20-day up again, to the next resistance level of 680. And then see if we can't create a new channel up here with the momentum that it got off this news. And then we got one more we're going to talk about. And I do like InBev a lot. I always have. It just had a real hard, like Miss, like Miss Vegas said, it, it, the shorts wanted to get involved in it, and they kind of brought it down to that 470 level. So the next one we're going to talk, which is a solid support from previous days, CJJD is the next one. Yeah, so you know what, CJJD, that's the China JoJo Drugstore. And, you know, the only thing is, you know, to keep in mind that they have filed a prospectus last week, April 2nd, for a $60 million mixed shelf offering. And, uh, you know what, it's it's just sitting there and uh, they could use it, exercise it at any time. But, you know, uh, I still like the chart. I mean, I'm not saying uh, swing and hold forever, but uh, the stock is even good for day trade. Um if you look at the actual chart, uh, it's it's still bullish. It keep this thing keeps just making fifty two week new highs. Um, this opened up at two eighty one, went to three oh eight. Uh, so not bad, even if you just let's say trade it for the day and not hold on to it. You know, so you should be looking at this stock and just keeping it on your watch list, maybe for day trade. Um, and, uh, you know, the volume wasn't too bad either. I mean, look, it had 1.56 million shares traded. And even after hours, Jim, we're at 308. I mean, we could, you know, probably breaking new highs. So I still like CJJD, but I caution that they have a shelf offering sitting there for 60 million. So, you know, just be conscious about that. And, uh, you know, maybe just day trade it. So, Jim, what do you think of the chart? I think it's a beautiful week and a half chart because we broke out mm -hmm. of resistance we broke out of a little channel here from 256 to oh somewhere around the 273 area a little under 20 cents and then we broke out of that last week maybe last friday and then she pulled had some kind of fat finger right here but didn't didn't respect it too well held support level right here at 273 and bounced on up create a new channel and then we had that breakout today so i'm going to pull up the year's chart see if we have any that's a whole new year high today we're gonna pull up a three year see what a three year tells us three year high so then we'll go back to the daily one minute I'm gonna find a support level definitely your first supports here at 302 your second one's gonna be right here at 297 which ain't too much of a spread so let's see if we can find us a little tighter one I'm thinking maybe right around here at the 296 <laughs> big pity drop so 292 and then a, definitely a low support of 289 and we did have it like a double top right here at the 308 after hours it did th hit 309 so your first support is going to be 302 396 397 and then this little channel here at 289 to 292 for support levels and let's see if we can break this out tomorrow from this year uh, three year, two year high at 302 up to 309. I mean, excuse me, 30, 308. Excuse me, 308 is what we got to break tomorrow. And that's going to be C, J, J, D, like Miss Vegas says. Be patient with it. Let it come to you. Don't chase it. And that concludes the aftermarket report. Please subscribe and ring that bell. And Miss Vegas has a couple things she'd like to say in the closing of the, of the, uh, the report. You there, Miss Vegas? I'm here. Okay. I'm here. So um, I just want to let everyone know. So 
please like and comment on the videos. But, you know, I'm interested to actually do a video with uh, Jim. Um, and to do, people have been messaging me about, you know, can you guys do other kinds of videos? I mean, they love, you. Guys, I know you guys like the ideas for trading, but some people have asked for other kinds of videos. So I have so many requests for different kinds of videos. So I kind of just want to find out from all of you if you can message in the comments below uh, if we could make a video um, on a specific topic, what would you like the video to be about? And then you know what? I'll make a list of the ones you guys want to learn about. Maybe it's about how to spot a breakout. Um, maybe it's look, you know, maybe patterns, maybe the watch list. I mean, I don't know. Whatever you guys are wanting, uh, we will definitely look to make because we make the videos for you. So you tell us what you want us to make and we will design an educational video that will help you all. And so I just need you just to take two seconds of your time and just comment below what you'd like a video to be about. And then we'll work on something and we'll look to put something out very soon so that we can help everyone. So thank you all so much for listening to the Aftermarket Report. We appreciate it. And uh, again, just let us know what videos you want us to do. And we're ha happy to do it. Have a great night, everyone, and see you tomorrow on I Love Stocks. All right, and please subscribe. We have a link on the I Love Stocks channel right here for the Twitter. So you can please subscribe to our Twitter link here. Told you if you do have it, have that Twitter channel, and we also have Stock Twits. Also, there's mine, and then Miss Vegas is right here. So please also follow us there. And we wish you all a great day. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, uh, uh, April the 8th, 2019, and we love stocks.